Hello, this is John Miller, the creator of this podcast. Now, the rest of Everest is probably the most in-depth look at just what it takes to climb the world's highest peak. But keep in mind that it is a series. And if you're checking out the podcast for the first time, do yourself a favor, go back to episode zero and watch everything in order. That's really the right way to enjoy it. Thanks so much. Hello, everyone. This is John Miller. Um, Before we start this week's episode, I want to ask for your help. As you know, the situation in Tibet is very grim right now, and our good friend Lobsong, the Tibetan guide that we had in all of these uh, 2007 episodes, he is he's in a, a bit of trouble right now. Um, I was able to get him on the phone, on his mobile phone, last night and spoke with him for... Oh, about half an hour. It was just wonderful to hear his voice. And, you know, we're very, Scott and I are very fond of, of Love Song. And um, the situation with him is that uh, all of the Tibetan men in Lhasa are basically under house arrest. Um, it's just not safe for them to go outside. Um, Lhasa is filled with a very strong military presence right now and all of the any men who Tibetan men who walk around are you know uh, subject to, to arrest and so he has not been able to work for a month now and all of his clients that he had tours arranged for during this peak uh, tourist season uh, have had to cancel. So he's in a financial spot right now, pretty bad. So what I was uh, hoping to do is leverage the power of the podcasting community here and see if uh, any of you would consider donating a dollar, maybe two dollars to Lob Song and uh, through me and I will uh, collect all of the money and transfer it uh, via Western Union. I actually sent him a couple hundred dollars last night of of my own money. Um, I'm not looking for large donations, I'm just looking for a bunch of donations. And uh, you can visit my website at uh, therestofeverest.com slash lobsong. Uh, Just follow the link on that screen there. And, you know, just consider making a donation. You know, if you don't, don't worry about it. Uh, You don't have to feel guilty or anything. I just thought, uh, you know, we'd do an experiment here and see if we can, you know, raise some money for Lopsong and his family and to help support his family and keep his business going, uh, weathering the storm here until Tibet opens back up and the situation either stabilizes or improves for the Tibetans. So uh, just one or two dollars, that's all I ask, and I will keep everyone updated on the progress we make for that fundraising. So thank you so much. And uh, now let's get on with this week's episode. This is the Rest of Everest video podcast, an almost unabridged expedition experience. Episode 78, Hey. Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Rest of Everest video podcast. I'm John Miller, joined again by Scott Jacobs out in California. How's it going, Scott? Going well, John. How are you? I'm doing really well. This is going to be a very cool episode. Um, you know, I, I, I say that every so often, <laughs> and I mean it every time. But this one is really neat because we're going to get to go into the Kumbum uh, Chorten, which is the largest Chorten or stupa in Tibet, and uh, it's really ornate. I, I, I've said again and again how ornate everything is at these monasteries and, and at these huge cultural sites in Tibet, but uh, I can't always photograph everything, so you're actually going to really get to go inside with us, and we were able to pay to uh, film in there, and it's really extravagant. I mean, it's just amazing. So with that said, let's uh, join Lapsang, uh here in the town of Yangtze. So here we go. Okay, so last week we were able to see the fort, the fortress, up on the hill. And this is in the the whole complex inside. What was the fortress called? The Zong? The Zong. I think, I think it was spelled D-Z-O-N-G. It just dominates the landscape in the Yangtze. One thing you will see again and again uh, at these places are dogs. And Lob Song explained that the monks, they take care of dogs. They take care of the, the animals that show up. So it's a very safe place for dogs to hang out and they feed them a little bit and everything. So you'll see dogs all over the place. 
So here is the Kumbum. It's a really amazing. I think it's got seven stories. This is there, it's there actually to quite, the left here. Sorry, there's what were you gonna say, Scott? No, I just I remember there being quite a few. I, I think I think you're you're right. There's just an endless set of stairs going to the top. <laughs> so this is the front steps of uh I believe it's a it's a small monastery. Right there, and the Kumbum is actually located to the left of this building. Look at that puppy. <laughs> Scott and I are both dog fans, so <laughs> we always took lots of footage of the of the dogs. You really want to take these guys home with you. It was hard enough to just to run up and scratch them behind the ears, but you know, I'm pretty sure they would bite you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A few of them let me, but most of them growled. So these are some statues that are outside of a lot of places uh, in Tibet, and these are actually guards. These are the protector kings. There are yeah. four of them, and uh, traditionally they sit outside of every monastery, um, going into some of the more sacred monasteries. Well, they're all sacred, but going into some of the monasteries, you will pass through the, the four protector kings, the, the guardian kings, the, I've known them as the protector kings. So there's well, the song. Quite a bit. Yeah, and so I was I was filming two of them, and there were two additional ones behind me uh, in that previous shot. Here's just a, a detail on all of the ornate painting and carving that's just everywhere. Every it seems like every surface is covered in icons and everything. It's. Though that that's the Tibetan endless knot that you see there, right there. I was just so amazed by how every surface is covered with, you know, significant uh, images, and it just goes and goes and goes. I could see the the wheel of life there for a second. So we're up on the roof of the uh, one of the buildings there at the monastery. I'm taking you guys up to the very top with me. <laughs> this is this was something that I thought was really interesting because you know. Lobsong is a devout Buddhist, and part of me is like, uh, Lobsong, karma. <laughs> There's a little bit of uh, karma to think about. Don't, don't throw snowballs at dogs, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but he was playful too, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I was laughing. I'm, I'm, you know, I didn't stop him. <laughs> Down there, you see that walkway in the center, and it's flanked on either side with uh, a lot of prayer wheels as you enter the complex here. You can see the wall in the distance that runs all the way around. Really interesting. Really glad the sun was out a little bit this day. It just shines off of those that gold. These are interesting. A large wall. Um, every monastery will have them, and uh, that was where they would roll down the tanka. And we, we're talking huge tanka religious really paintings um, during certain <laughs> festivals. I need to imagine. <laughs> Do you know how old the the zong is? I don't. I don't remember. I tell you that Yangtze has significance. Um, 
there was a massacre that occurred um, between the British Army and the um, Tibetan Army, and um, just a just historical confrontation between the two, where the Tibetans marched out with a banner from the Dalai Lama, um, said to protect them from the British bullets, but um, obviously did not, um, didn't last long. <laughs> yeah. But... This is the Kumblum, which, uh, as I understand it, is, translates to um, 100,000 images. And there are a num- number of chapels in here and lots of statues. It's extremely ornate. And I think it dates back from the 1400s. And this is what we get to go inside. Thank you, Scott, for paying the fee to let me photograph inside. I, I don't remember doing that, but, but you're welcome. <laughs> well, I, I, this is how I know that you did, because I didn't have any uh, currency. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you, had all, right. you had all the, uh, all the currency. I think we put it, paid in, in, in Eugen. Interesting thing about um, a lot of these monasteries is that you would pay the official fee um, to the, the gatekeeper. And they said it's mostly for administrative fees. A little bit of it goes to the actual monastery, but a lot of it goes to the um, government or the officials behind, you know, running the place. But all of the money that you donate inside <laughs> stays inside. So kind of interesting. That's, yeah. I like paying the photography fees because um, basically it stayed inside the monastery. A uh, lop song right there. Was, I think he was saying that for a, a regular camera, it's a certain amount. But for me, with my video camera, which is not very big, but it's it's decked out with a, a big microphone and <laughs> everything, he said, uh, for that, it's going to be 20. <laughs> I won't take pictures with one. I'll just let him. So I can... Yeah, you're good. Anywhere? Thank you. So we're walking around the base here. So all these tablets, if you take pictures inside, okay. you, you can. You know, it's funny what you remember. I'm wearing a giant down coat. I remember <laughs> you get in, in climbing. <laughs> in, in climbing this, I would alternate between meeting it and sweating. <laughs> so I read about this. This place, you know, was really a feast for the eyes and, you know, as I'm trying to videotape everything, it was sort of like, where do I begin? And these, these statues are all really tall. And because the, um, the kumbum is it's tiered and every level is slightly smaller than the one below it. And so, you know, you can get some scale there about how big that's the, the main statue in the middle. But um, because every floor is slightly smaller in diameter than the one below it, um, there's skylights at the top of all of these chapels with with these uh, statues, so uh, it lights it from the top a little bit. Otherwise, it'd be really, really, really dark. Some of the rooms were very dark. You you you'd go in and there were just little side rooms without the skylight or without a window, and see the only light you get is from the opening. And some of them were pretty pretty concealed. <laughs> It was dark. It took a few seconds for your eyes to adjust. And you can see that the statues are all actually clothed. It's really cool. And that's very typical of all of the uh, the Buddha statues that you see. They're, they all are wearing robes. And also, I guess this, this is, um, like I said, it's the largest chorten in 
Tibet, but it's also very unusual to have anything inside. And I think that's because there's huge Nepal influences here. Po possibly even Hindu influences. And I think that's the influence, is that one of the, one of the main influences is that there is stuff inside, that it is hollow inside, and uh, you, can, you can go inside. I did not know that. The only reason I know that is because I believe Lobsong told me. <laughs> 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 I'm no expert. Although that man is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's where I get most of my information, too. That's a close up of some of the cloth uh, on one of the robes on one of the statues. And I'm not in one single room here. You know, I'm in a whole, I'm, you'll see a whole bunch of different statues, and I'm just going through a whole bunch of the different, uh, the different chapels. I, w I want to say, I think they were close to like 80, 80 or 90 rooms in the entire Jordan. It was, I mean, it was just a room. Actually, I'm looking it up here. It says in uh, Wikipedia, if, so I'm, I'm going to just say we're going to trust Wikipedia in this case. There's 77 chapels on six floors. And uh, apparently it was uh, partially destroyed in the Cultural Revolution, China, China's Cultural Revolution. And so there's actually, there were a lot of uh, statues that were, I guess, supposedly even more grand than what we're seeing that were destroyed, I think, on the outside. I mean, look at all these different figures. And then you can see the wall behind is all painted, too. It's just, it's nonstop. It's just a complete cacophony <laughs> of uh, imagery. And it just screams at you. It's just so complex. It's just amazing. So these are more of the, uh, did you say that they're warrior kings? Protector kings. Protector kings. Yeah, I don't think I'd like to come across one of those guys <laughs> in real life, you know. It certainly works for me. Absolutely. Be like, dude, you, okay, you got me. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I'm just going to put my weapon down now and back away slowly. <laughs> and they're life size. Or, or greater than life size. Absolutely. So this is how you can see that it's it's hollow inside. So I'm I had just made a, a round around the uh, the bottom floor, and so now I'm walking up to the next floor. This was really cool. <laughs> Looked like something you'd see in a movie, you know. It really did. You know, there were actually little hallways behind some of the rooms, too. I remember going into one of them and it being so dark that I had to walk with my hands out in front of my face <laughs> for a good few seconds before the light just started coming in from the other side. It was a series of corners, of course. This was just a great, great building. A great experience. You know, we went into so many monasteries over the course of our trip. I didn't really get monasteried out, but this one in particular was so fantastic just because room after room, 
and the statues were so beautiful. There was so much going on. It was, uh, and it was just, it was just a pleasure to come across. And you know, it this it you do kind of get on overload with all you know all of this stuff. But this is this is very typical of the type of just amazing things that you see inside, like you know inside the uh, Patala Palace. I mean, how do you describe what we saw? I just don't even know how. And you know, some of it was even more incredible than this stuff. But there's just so much stuff, and you just for, you know, by and large, you cannot film inside, and so you really have to go to see for yourself. And you know, it's really a shame right now that Tibet is closed to foreigners. I, I do believe it's going to be opening next month. The border is going to be opening back up. Um, so anyone who's thinking about going and seeing this stuff, please do. It's just, I mean. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm filming, you know, like a tenth of everything that we saw. And for the most part, we were the only people here. I thought this was great to get another overview of the land and, you know, just see the countryside in Tibet. This is a fairly large town, but still, you know, the towns are surrounded by just beautiful countryside. Dominated by mountains. Yeah. And we're, you know, we're probably at about 13, 14,000 feet here. Got to keep that in the back of your head the whole time. Back of your mind, you guys, we're all, <laughs> we're as high as the highest mountains in the continental United States. So this is a good time to bring up the karma you, was, you were speaking of, <laughs> because uh, he was at a disadvantage <laughs> when we started throwing snowballs at him. <laughs> hey, you know, what uh, goes around comes around. <laughs> That was that was karma biting him in the butt. <laughs> Good day. You can see that it was warming up. All the snow was melting. That was probably I don't know, I think maybe this day it got up to on us maybe fifty. Fifty degrees Fahrenheit. That you know, that in, was in the sun. Just as a yeah. gas. Mm -hmm. sure. Definitely in the sun, yeah. Yeah, we're getting up near the top here. I love this shot. <laughs> Not bad. I think this is on the top here. This was on the very top. And, you know, it's just a huge platform up there, and you can walk around. And you could fall off the edge. There's no railings. That's one of the, you know, the cool thing about going to these other countries. It's like, you know, in the United States, there it would be a, a national um, monument or something, and there would have to be uh, railings and everything everywhere uh, on something like this, at least. And uh, so it's cool how, you know, relatively uh, untouched it all is. And plus, there's just not the visitation that you get in the monuments and, and everything in the United States. So, hope that wasn't too much of a dig on the National Park System, Scott, you being a ranger and everything. <laughs> I, I take no offense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, next week, we are going to travel to Shigatse, I believe, which is the second largest city in Tibet. And we're going to get to take a look at the Tashilumpo Monastery. And that place, again, is just incredible. <laughs> I mean, it's just mind-blowing how, uh, how big it is. And uh, we get to see some really cool stuff, as usual. So every episode's filled with a little bit of uh, incredible, uh, incredible uh, images. So thanks a lot, Scott. Thank you, John. And uh, please, everyone, be sure to catch us next week. We'll see you then. Bye. The rest of Everest is downloaded all over the world every week. If you enjoy watching and would like to show your support, then take a look at my website. Aside from having lots of additional blog entries from the expedition updated every week, 
there's this little donation button on every page. Now, many of you have pressed that button and your generous contributions are helping to cover my hosting fees. If you haven't donated but would like to, then just contribute any amount. In return, I'll give you access to the video and audio dispatches I sent out while we were actually at Everest. It's pretty interesting stuff. Contribute $25 or more, and I'll even throw in an iPod-compatible version of the film Everest The Other Side. That's the project the entire podcast here is based on. As always, our announcer is Marlon May, and our music is provided by Wendy Wu. Check her out at wendywu.com. Thanks so much, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching The Rest of Everest. For more information on the expedition, please visit therestofeverest.com. Everest.com.